What's good, One Piece fans? It's your main man, Master Cell, leader the Master Knights of the Roundtable of Company One. Subscribe to this thing. And we're here back with another one ass piece of review. Now, if I'm honest with y'all, I didn't expect to review this episode. Because as you can tell, this is more later in the night than I typically do my One Piece for videos. And I'm wearing a WWE shirt right now because I just went to a WWE event. Bad Blood was in Atlanta. And honestly, it was a glorious show and I regret nothing. You will see me rocking the OTC in future videos. Which I'm gonna need because for those who keep up to date with that show and the program, hopefully this shirt isn't expired tomorrow, if you know what I mean. But this is a One Piece video, and me coming back to that event, I got back to the house late. So, I first thing I did when I came home was watch One Piece. I just heated up some chicken wings that I cooked beforehand. Just to paint the whole picture, I cut the fuck out of those chicken wings. But upon watching this episode, honestly, if I make a long story short, as a guy who reviewed One Piece on this channel more times than he can count, that review and this will be absolutely criminal. Vice Admiral Garp showed his ass in this episode. This episode was more Garp than we ever got ever. And it's also a return to form, and it's not as if One Piece still hasn't been on the animation spectacular that it has always been on since the Egghead arc and that the Wano arc. But as you can tell with the last couple of episodes we were having finished off what happened at the Reverie, we haven't had a chance to pretty much flex this One Piece great ass animation. So with all that being built up to this moment, this episode, and more likely the next, seeing how that preview went, was the entirety of it. Even from conversations, big ass attack moments, motherfuckers coming in doing this, garbage, bum, bumming all these pirates out at the same time, and that flashback with Aokiji when he was, Garp came in there pissed off, talking about how Luffy wants to be a pirate. Excuse me, he said his grandson. Why was that the most beautifully animated moment of this episode? That shit was like an early Simpsons episode with like a million dollar budget. That conversation was so fluid, like this real life doesn't move as good as this. <laughs> and the weirdest part about all this is, not to spoil anybody, but it's not even done yet. That's what I'm talking about next week. Not only do we see, have to see Kobe get back into action and Garp continue his fight with Aokiji, like, despite how the preview showed you in his own, bruh. Especially with the hype of all this being the line where Aokiji said you made a troublesome <laughs> apprentice and he's like you're expelled. But he didn't say apprentice, he said student. And then next episode hyped up, you know, <laughs> the whole thing with Kobe. No shade to anybody, but for all that he's considered as far as Garp is concerned, Aokiji, you're out. Kobe, you're in. Show me what I got next week. Oh my god, I'm gonna turn this AC up, it's hot as fuck. For those who see my earlier videos, maybe I wasn't too keen on the Bleach return, but from a good ass drama return, from a good ass WWE pay per view, some good ass chicken wings, and now this One Piece episode, the hype has been real all day today. It was a hell of a Saturday. I don't care what no one tells me. Let's not stop it though, let's keep getting into it. You should shake your hot sauce before you use it just in case you didn't know. As I was saying, this episode was all Garp. It started the whole thing off, even with the flashback of showing how Garp was training in the first place, punching the marine ships. Except you, if you was using hockey, you're cheating. You have to use your actual hands and whatnot. That's not time a training effort doesn't get you this far. There's a lot of characters I can say that young Garp kind of looks like in anime, but honestly, the first person that went to mind was like a Zoro had black hair type shit. <laughs> like a pre time skip Zoro had this One Piece animation they have right now, he was a little bit more bulkier. That, 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 that's what young Garp looks like. And just continuing off of that flashback, we do see Aokiji. Why even call him that anymore? We see Kuz on. Pretty much, he noticed Garp's doing all this and he wants to do as Garp is doing. He tries to start punching that thing and it immediately hurts his hands. Pushing the steel part of a boat, I imagine, would do that. This ain't the going merry. Wow, did I just make that joke? The entirety of the One Piece fan base, I just, I, I apologize. But even though Garp was like, if you use hockey, <laughs> hockey is not going to be real training, Kuzan was like, bruh, I wasn't even using hockey, like, bruh. <laughs> even under the watchful eye of one of the head admirals at the time, like, <laughs> like these guys were just going in on these ships. And that was pretty much the basis of their training, because, you know, like, even Garp was like, you want to shadow somebody, shadow somebody else, because, you know, I like my independence. I don't mean to undermine the, you know, training process of the admirals, but it appears it doesn't take too much. Which kind of gives you the feel of maybe it's not actually what the training regimen itself is how much you put into your training underneath somebody in the Navy as an underneath an admiral that forges this bond. As a guy who was one of the admirals, one of the top admirals, to facing freaking Akihinu to be the top guy and almost winning that fight, you can imagine that Aokiji Kuzan worked his ass off to get where he is today. 
even though that place where he's at today is a <laughs> top pirate of one of the most evil groups in the show. Not to mention, you can imagine Garp being pretty much the most top flight guy besides the fleet admiral. Thinking more or less, he probably just didn't want that position. Despite the master-student relationship they had, these guys came up together. Got that strength together. And it gives you the feel that that student-master relationship is kind of just by title alone. I'm trying to say these two was best homies, but after watching that fluent ass flashback, I mean, what feel did you guys get from it? My apologies. I, I just realized I messed up there. I was talking about Luffy earlier, but Garp was having that fluent flashback. He was actually mad that his son, Dragon, became a revolutionary. My apologies for that. I know somebody's not going to watch this entire video and correct me on that, I can tell. At least this part's my own fault. I'm like fairytale fans. But moving on, honestly, yes, this episode had all the hits. Even before Kuzan got back in the picture, it was the moments where Garp was just punching out that one big dude. The guy that looks like, you know, one of those same guys as in uh, Oris type shit. Garp just jumped up and punched him in front of him by Garp. And black, the Blackbeard Pirates playing commentary throughout the whole episode with their eyes pumping out their head like Luffy's Gear 5 is here. But the Blackbeard Pirates got a W outside of Kusan this episode. It is a D Shiryu, if I'm saying his name correct, as in the guy from Impel Down. Despite all these considered Kuzan's betrayal of the Navy, this guy, this, this guy, this same guy that got one of the best devil fruits ever, apparently the Sanji, if not the best fruit coming out of him freaking <laughs> throw the bark. Gekko Moria came through here to talk about he wanted that guy back. <laughs> With his invisible, invisible fruit, he makes a distraction for Kobe, making like damsel in distress kind of thing, but they end up being a trap just for him to come through and try to stab Kobe. Garp notices this and he blocks it. However, he blocks it with his flesh. And honestly, at that point, you have to talk about a different conversation here. And it's kind of like a thing where, if you look at things from Kobe's perspective, and notice how things has gone down in front of Kobe before, especially when it came to the Paramount War, the war of the best for my English dub viewers, you can kind of get the feel that Garp is kind of on the type of time where it was like black, not black, fuck that nigga. It was like white beard. That sounds slick racist to anybody else? My bad. Well, it was kind of like, say, White Bill was like, save Ace and get the whole team out of there, even at the cost of himself. Now, watch you do this episode and look at the, again, from Kobe's perspective, knowing about that type of shit. How do you think Garp is moving this episode? Because when you think about it, Garp had a huge line here that kind of was just like, very pirate-like. As in, at the end of the day, if everybody's trying to gang up right now, all we have to do is go off the island and run away. Them escaping the situation right now is the W. Throughout the history of the 1100 episodes of One Piece, while we have had plenty of times where Team Straw Hat had to indeed secure the W, they have it beat the other opponent to be seen as the victory, that is simply how pirates move. There was countless times where you could see Luffy's biggest W's was simply followed up by getting away from the Navy. Hell, before the freaking New World arc, all you had to do was save the name Smoker. Not to mention the first big time we had a Buster Call type ish going on <laughs> in his lobby. What in the hell am I even talking about? Bruh, New World in general? Punk Hazard? Yeah. Dress Rosa? Definitely with Fuji Toro around? Freaking, it's not the Navy this time, but Whole Cake Island? <laughs> big Mom? Come on. So needless to say, the mentality that Garp got right now is kind of one of a pirate. If we save Kobe right now, which is what we came to do, that is the W, and so let's just get the hell off this island. However, with Garp trying to take on everybody himself, trying to throw every, all these bodies out the way, and taking these huge stabs and whatnot by generals and whatnot, again, Garp just wants everybody else to leave. If he gets taken out, he gets taken out. That's not his goal for himself to leave. He wanted to save Kobe as many other people as he can. At the same time, Annabelle really just makes <laughs> the Blackbeard Pirates like that much more as the bad guys, which they are in nobody else's eyes, the eyes of freaking Oda. But those who forgot, despite Emu being around now and Akihinu being a thing still, Blackbeard is still very much widely thought of as Luffy's final opponent. opponent. I ram rambled on for a minute there, so let's kind of wrap things up. Like I said, Kuzan does come back. And those beautiful flashbacks aside, but when I finish this episode, I'm going to immediately to Twitter and when I was first watching this episode, I seen this as one big thing of them trying to gear up one big ass attack against each other, and that is indeed what happened. But bruh, they, Twitter is all over the place highlighting how, how these two guys with these big, big ass animation moments behind them gearing up this hockey attack on each side made it look like a majestic ass dap. 
And these guys are kind of like just clasping hands. Like, I can't do it with one hand, but you, anybody who's handshake a black guy before know what I'm talking about. Stop being racist. You've dabbed it up at home before, right? Come on, channel. Again, I wanted to act like the best homies, but the vibes are just there. And this episode made you feel like Garbage Kuzan is the breakup of 2024. <laughs> and that stick means all of the homeboys that they have there, but that's how it felt. But just aside, they did have the big lads and blue each other back, so they're kind of both out of commission right now, even though that still means Garp has one up. This is the second time Kuzan is down for the count. But we come to find at the end of this episode, this guy, whose name I believe was like Alonzo or something, he has a huge devil fruit power, but it turns out he himself is Pirate Island, and not the big skull and hand part of Pirate Island. And in very much dramatic fashion, we have the cliffhanger heading off into next week, as in... Our opponent right now at the time, while we try to leave Pirate Island, is all these considered Pirate Island. Again, this is the Blackbeard Squad, the Blackbeard Pirates. They were coming fully equipped. Matter of fact, they didn't come at all. You guys came over here. All these considered, all the mistakes is kind of classified under. What did you guys think this was? But this video is getting long, and I believe I made my point. This freaking episode was crazy. But maybe it didn't have a huge, complex, com ah, my bad. Maybe it didn't have huge, climactic moments like we had in near the end of Wano, like the end of Zoro's fight, the end of Luffy's fight, and blah, blah, blah. But I've been seeing those One Piece lists of the best episodes of One Piece and the best animated episodes of One Piece. And I've always kind of had the thoughts as in which Egghead episodes could kind of find its way creeping in there. Nigga. 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 Did we watch the same episode? On that note, it's not even over. Once again, we continue this next week. So in this review, if I did everything besides jump the gun, let's end it here. If you watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to the Spin Move. Mm -hmm. You know, at this point, having a bunch of One Piece friends to add a fish and Luffy or Luffy and his bros kind of feel basic. Like, we're going to need more variety in this house.